am I just the only one because I have witch in my name and they're like, you want to be a part of the Illuminati? Like, <laughs> I mean, perhaps. I mean, I don't know. And of course, like as soon as I say Illuminati and you start talking, like. <laughs> Uh, from a person on Instagram saying, hello there, fellow light worker. Yes. I heard a little girl. You heard a little girl? On. Hello? Is this episode over? No. Till next time. <laughs> no! Welcome, guys, to the um, the uh, down the rat down the rap down the rabbit hole podcast with Gwen and Omar. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's okay. I'm good, Omar. Thank you. No, this is good. We need to start with some laughter. We had. <laughs> I don't I'm not editing this. <laughs> how's your How's your Wednesday? It's going good. It's 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 not it's not too shabby. We're gonna keep it light today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think so. I think honestly, given that it's Pisces season, and after just this full moon that we just had, and Venus is a Pisces at the moment, I I feel like everyone has like this air of just wanting to hug everybody and love everyone and I'm like I, you know I typically not a person that hugs people but I I want to hug everyone right now like I want to be I, I want to be like the nice kid at the playground that just wants to be friends with everyone and I'm typically not like that after especially after this full moon we just had I'm like if no yeah no me. I, I completely agree with you there because on the way it, it kind of ended with me on that note, like it was getting like super serious and I was like, no, <laughs> none of this. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad we are stepping into new phase and yeah, it's really going to be more of that passionate live energy coming up. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, more, we need more of that. We need that. Yeah. After, I mean, I think we need more like, you know, joie de vivre, as the French say, because after last year, I, I just want to rise. I'm just tired of accepting this vibrational frequency and being okay with it when I know there are higher ones to access already. And I guess even right now, like it's really just about setting the intention and really setting the mood for yourself every day and in every moment. And I have been the busiest that I have been in over a year and I couldn't be any more happier, but I do think that it's a part of the influence of wanting to get creative and, you know, I guess really just how this podcast even came to being. Mm -hmm. So speaking of rising, cool story. I'm gonna let you tell it because um, we did leave our audience on a little preview spoiler last week and we showed at the very beginning of this, okay? We did. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm gonna let you drink your coffee and then, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good segue just to kind of get into what we've been trying to get into episode two, which we've been having a lot of technical difficulty um, and listening to things that are beyond our comprehension. Um, but we, we know that they are there and that want us to rise. So we have um, Susie, who we do sense who is with us, um, did not know who she is, but we do know that she is attached to Omar. Um, 
so we are going to be talking about spirit guides today and Omar will <laughs> talk about <laughs> what Let's happened when we started talking. So. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So I guess how a better, I get uh, a little introduction to, I suppose, who my spirit guide is. Um, even before this podcast was even created, um, talking to Gwen has significantly shifted the way that she comes through. And I know that we've all, we all have spirit guides. You have a spirit guide. Um, your mom has a spirit guide. Your grandmama has a, like a spirit guide. Everyone has a spirit guide. But it's really just about being open to the belief that like, it's not just you navigating this uh, wonderland, so to say alone because sort of like the Cheshire cat that just appears out of nowhere in the tale to Alice, Alice being us humans going into a spiritual realm that is full of magic, unexplained occurrences or even just synchronicities that are beyond our control that are truly just angels. But I mean, how would you perceive a uh, spirit guides yourself because i mean i i know that i i have one but i never really toyed with the idea that like i was being guided i just felt like well perhaps i'm being guided but i'm not necessarily like i've never seen this person never felt this person but in reality i felt like no actually perhaps i always have and i just chose to block it out and not necessarily accept it and within multiple conversations what, that Gwen and I have had together. I live in Los Angeles. Gwen lives in Texas. That being said, when we had recorded the previous episode, it was deleted. We didn't, it wasn't saved, but we decided to come back to the subject that we kind of left off, left you guys on, on the pilot episode or our first episode rather, mm -hmm. um, which is, Gwen and I were talking, and I noticed there was something above her head, and I couldn't quite uh, put my finger on what, what it was, but as she was talking to me, my, my focus started to shift a little, and as my focus started to shift a little bit, I just started paying attention to her head, and I was like, why am I, why am I paying attention to her head? And then I, I saw a shadow, and at some point in the, in the recording that we had, had made, we heard a laugh. Mm -hmm. and then it and I didn't want to tell Gwen this because I was like why am I focused on not her right now why am I being sort of directed to look in this area mm -hmm. so then um Gwen got spooked I did Gwen, <laughs> Gwen is pretty sad she's a Capricorn sun Capricorn rising She's kind of, you know, grounded. She doesn't, she's not, she's not a jumpy person like I am. I'm a Virgo rising and a Virgo moon. I jump at everything. Uh, I'm anxious. Uh, I'm nervous, but I know how to have a good time. So what ended up happening was within this recording, she traveled to Gwen in Texas and knocked over an herb bag, and mm -hmm. we couldn't quite understand why, but then that's when things started getting a lot more curiouser and curiouser, mm -hmm. because as I started to step into this rabbit hole, so to speak, I started to notice little things around me that were like kind of, well, that's, that's a coincidence, and I know that I can't as a person that is not a stranger to synchronicities or even like, you know, an occurrence being a, a coincidence, I was like, why am I telling myself that it's a coincidence when obviously that's, I know that these things aren't to be or aren't, you know, a thing. Things sort of just happen. And I remember one night I was outside in my patio and I was like, I got the thought of even wanting to like look up Susie and, and the Banshees. And I thought, well, I like Susan the Banshees. I think they're, I think she's really cool. I think she's like a punk rock sort of like icon. And 
I'm, I'm like, I just want to, I went ahead and I just like looked it up on Spotify. And one of the titles of the album was Through the Looking Glass. And I was like, well, why am, why am I doing this again? And even looking through like the, the list of, of songs, I'm like, that's just funny because that's the title of our podcast. But why is it that um, you're showing me this again? And again, in disbelief is sort of just like in the uncomfortable stillness of even trying to make sense of everything i had asked well if it is you if your name is Susie, you know could you give me a sign or anything i don't I'm not quite sure if she came through that night in particular but the next morning i went to work and the fire we had a, like a testing for the fire alarm and as that was going on the music was shut off and as the music was shut off i my coworker was like really really upset because he wanted to listen to music he didn't want to um work under the circumstances where they were just quiet because it gets a little like you know i guess too much if you don't have something playing in the back and just distract you and he had asked me aren't you like annoyed that there's no music and i'm like i honestly i don't even care because i'm thinking about like hey if you're Susie and if you're my spirit guide can you give me a sign? And after I had finished that conversation with my coworker, five minutes later, the music comes on and the song that plays is I Put a Spell on You by Nina Simone. And in that moment, I was like, <laughs> okay, you're obviously here at work. You're obviously making your presence known. So I have no reason to doubt this so I started to I, I suppose like have conversations with my guide and really try to build a relationship and I've realized that perhaps the reason why she's so boisterous and loud and sort of playful is because I sort of get locked in a place where I develop tunnel vision and I don't pay attention to things which is why I guess she had to go through the screen to Texas to let you know hey she can feel it and she doesn't scare easy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> up until the very end when you were like, I heard a little girl and I'm like, you heard a little girl? <laughs> like, you know, I'm thinking like, oh crap, we're going to have like a shining moment, you know, <laughs> like, like we can't I mean, do this. We were know, I, I don't think she's, she's little, obviously. I, I think she's very, um, She's very spunky. Like we talked about um, her like being a Leo, like here I am, hear me. Um, and I, <laughs> I find it very interesting. Well, I think it was like the second, because when we, you read my natal chart, when we started talking, like we didn't think we were going to like click as well as we did. And we just did. We were like on the phone for hours. So I think it was like, the day after, second phone call, we're on the phone and we're thinking maybe like because it's cell phone reception kind of thing before the whole herbs incident of 2021, like that's what I want to call it. But um, no, but we heard a lady's voice come through on the phone and I was like, was that you? What Did you say something? Because I was doing the reading for you. And I told you I heard a woman say her name. And I thought she said, my name is Sarah. My name is Sarah. And I was like, well, that's odd. I was like, I know my guide's name. Like my guardian angel is Sarah. But it wasn't that she was trying to say Sarah the more that you get like these downloads and stuff coming through and then the the uh kind of like the names that you were getting or whatever download that you got it came down to being Susie and the music the synchronicities everything and um how she's just been kind of like happier you're giving her that attention versus like so I have Sarah who's kind of like um a lot of people, some people, most of our viewers, they know who you are through Kelly's community. She has um, 
Larry, and Mary. I have Sarah, and I have George. George is very much like he is the spirit guide. I don't know if you noticed this, but I was looking in the shift on the camera. Like, he's pretty much like right here. And um, mm -hmm. so he, I kind of look at him like the guardian because he's like, yeah, like we're totally like in this real life kind of thing. So um, Sarah's really kind of like, <laughs> like the let's, let's do love, patience and tolerance, that kind of thing. And I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> I know. No, but I, I see her betterment for it, though. Um, on, on some things, some things. We can still agree to disagree. But no, George, George is, like, very, like, reserved. He's very, um, calls it like it is. Um, he has a personality of his own. Um, he, he did dis disclose to me one day in the shower. I was just talking to him. Because, again, people, our guys have seen us naked. Like, whether we like it or not, they have seen us do everything um so I'm talking to him in the shower and washing my hair and I was like George I don't think I've ever heard you cuss when you've given a message and even if I'm doing tarot card readings or something like it's always me adding my flavor across um but you have like when you're relaying the message you don't cuss and he's like I don't like it um which I think that's why we are perfect um, because you like it, and I feel like I live a little through you when you cuss. <laughs> I could just, like, bust it out laughing because that's something so random that it's, like, you know, th this is, like, a whole entity on its own. Like, is, did you hear that? Yeah. 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 No. And I that feel. Was, that I was feel. Hard. I feel all this. There's like this excitement coming in. So here, here, here's the other thing too. Sarah, welcome, welcome. We appreciate you being here. Um, <laughs> I can't help it. She, you know, it's, it's, she's she's always so giggly. I feel like she's just always. I, I have a feeling that. The way that she come, comes across to me is that sometimes I know that I have a tendency to take things a little too seriously and I don't allow myself the, I guess, my inner child to play a little bit. And I think that yeah. she sort of introduces that sense of like, you yeah, listen, I think you're like, I think what you're doing is fun, but like, you're not actually having fun. Like, you're not laughing. You're not like, you're so stiff. I feel like what she tells me, and she's just really like, you know, that's moment. not fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, we tried to do this recording twice now, one yesterday, today, and it's just, <laughs> and we had technical issues as soon as we acknowledged her. She's made Omar's internet work just fine. I don't know if we need to come up with some sort of like, you know, like Sarah, please, like, <laughs> like Susie, please, like, can you? <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, <laughs> Susie, what I feel like what Susie loves to do to me at work is the way that sometimes the like the computer screen at work doesn't work, and it's like being wonky or right? I can't clock into work. Because I know that, like, I've come in so rushed and not so centered. And she sort of, like, does things. So, like, hey, hey, listen, listen. You're not, you're not in the right headspace. You're, like, a little, you know, panicky. You're not, you know, that jovial, like, hey, hello, very open. You're not open. And I think that she helps me a lot in the way that, for me to not necessarily care about the the inner critic that I have inside of my head because she sort of like I mean again like I guess the way the, the best way I can put it is like if you're working at a restaurant and like you break a glass everyone claps and that's just her way of being like hey it's not a big deal like that's good luck 
all the things that you think are like working against you or actually working for you but I'm trying to get your attention to sort of like smirk a little come alive a little you know yeah. because that like it my emotions always get on my face so when I am concerned or if I'm worried it's always in the eyes or in the face and she's sort of like shh, shh, shh. hey hey shh, shh. Hmm. hey you want to like giggle a little bit for like a second or she'll like she's really funny she likes to come through to music or she likes to narrate the the way that I decorate time with a playlist I, I mean as of recently since I've gotten to know her she's very clever in the way that I asked her upon first meeting not upon first meeting I suppose but like you know I guess by becoming acquainted I asked her well, how would, what, how would you like to, for me to pronounce your name or spell it? And she said, S-U-Z-Y, S-U-Z-S-U-S-I-E, or you can spell like Susie, like Susie and the Banshees. And so then at that point, I realized, well, what does Susie, Sue, isn't that like an Indian tribe, right? And so I went on Google and I looked up what Sue meant, and it was like a slur name for the Lakota and Dakota tribes. And upon googling what Lakota and Dakota meant, it translates to friend or guide. And I thought, you're clever. You're really clever. Because I, again, Susie Sue being the, you know, this amazing rock star that's like very individualistic and so uncatering to what others want her to be. And I think that she's sort of like, has that again Susie my spirit guide brings that sort of sense of breaking away from tradition being a little bit more bolder and I realized it within my life in those moments where my life kind of shifted and changed was when I was being a little bit more bolder being a lot more louder being a lot more vocal and not necessarily caring about the self critiques that I carried with me and as I've talked to her and sort of developed this um relationship with her she she just comes up I mean it's been like oh this person on Instagram Susie is just following you and I'm like okay that's interesting or then like even at work I had like a Suzette come in and a Suzanne and a Susie and I'm like you just I, I hear you I know mm -hmm. you're coming through what do you have to say? And it's just really uh, building and being, I guess, that open to communicating with an invisible uh, being. Because again, when you're when I was doing it, I felt like I was like, I'm loony right now. What am I doing? What am I doing? But I guess it's really just about asking for that guidance or asking for a sign so they can come through. And you'll know it when you'll feel it because given what kind of personality your guide has, your mood will definitely shift. Yeah, yeah. And um, and a lot of people ask about that too. Like, it's I find it so awesome how she disclosed, like, the names for you, how Kelly has her names for her guides. Sarah, uh, when I was starting to talk to George more, I had the name... I had his name for probably like a good year and a half to two before I started talking to him, like if he was a real person. And um, when I started talking to him, I want to say probably like four months down the line, one, I wanted to get it confirmed first, like, <laughs> like there's facts, you know, like, because uh, I had um, one lady that I got a tarot card reading from, she told me his name. And so I had that info for some time. And then I was like, there was, when I got kind of full circle around last year, um, I found somebody who channels that she talks to um, her guides and she had two of them um, or has two of them just kind of like the way I talked to George and Sarah, but she talked to George um, and she acts kind of like a, 
like a medium of sorts too. And so she was like, yeah, his name's George. That's all confirmed. Okay. What's going on with this? What's going on with like the Morgan, you know, and like answering all these things. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start talking to them because she's like, just talk to them like they're a person if they're there. And I'm like, okay, I think I can do that. It's a little crazy. Mm-hmm. And then instead of having mental conversations, I am talking to them like if they're really here. But most of the time we do talk like in our brain, like if we're out in public or something, you know, and I get a message or whatever. But um, it, in the comfort of my own home, like George is always with me. And then then there's other voices that show up. Like I'm driving in the car, like, hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm like, and who are you? And who do you belong to? And, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I'm yours. I'm like, okay, why do you sound like that? And it's like, well, you really liked the little mermaid when you were younger. And so I'm taking on this voice, you know, and it's like, well, can you not, like, I haven't been like six in a very long time, you know, but she means that in the most serious way. Um, she can put in like a voice if she needs to, (laughs) but George has always remained constant. And I appreciate the fact you brought this up about how we have our mind as we have gone over time through the years. Um, when I had the reading with the channel, um, this past year, uh, the medium, she said George is like a, a cherubim. And I'm like, I don't even know what a cherubim is. And I have my, um, my, what is it? The influence, is it influence of the angels tarot card deck? Yeah. Um, the, the, the last name is Barbessi on it. And it's very beautiful tarot card deck Full, it, it almost looks very much like um, made for me in my recovering Catholicism. But anyway, I pull one of the cards. I guess it was like the sun card and it has like the angels kind of like what you would see like in the clouds, like very childlike kind of thing. And I'm reading the description and it says cherubim. And I'm like, okay. Then my mind goes back to when I was about five or six. Uh, My mom is Brazilian. We were visiting family um, and my grandmother was still um, very much like active and alive at the time. And um, we're walking, we're trying to catch a taxi on the street. And I don't remember it again. I know now, but George was trying to talk to me then because when I picture George, I think of, not that it really matters, but um, he tries to show himself very much in human form to me, for me to understand. Um, Very, I want to call him like very like olive skin, curly hair, very dark, um, very handsome. And um, but, ve- but very much his characteristic, I think of the color like green, which will yeah. bring up the other story to um, what we talked about that last time. Um, and the reason why I think of the color green, because when in that, in, in, from what I can remember as a kid, we're walking towards the street to catch a taxi and I see something fly across the sky. And it looks like a baby angel, like a cherubim that's placed in the photo. And I'm like, well, this isn't something you don't really see every day. And nobody else has a reaction. I'm the only one looking at it. You know, I don't really think anything of it for like being a kid, you know. And, but it took me so far back because now I'm 35. So 30 years later. I have that memory of being a kid walking the streets and thinking of seeing this and then getting the word cherubim, no, finding it in the book and then like, okay, this is the memory you had 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, that makes me feel a little bit better and kind of like, I wish I acknowledged it then 
<laughs> you know? So, I mean, but it's, it's really cool. And, um, the more that I've honed in on those abilities, like kind of what you're doing right now, uh, which I'm still trying to figure it out, but like, um, you know, I was telling Omar, he was talking, I guess it was like a dream, like you were traveling and you had two guides with you. And I said, but you were talking about a, a guide. And I said, were there two of them? And you're like, yes. I said, male and female. And you're like, yes. And I was like, was one like wearing green and or something? I can't even remember now what was going on. But I was like, you have two of them, male and female. I, the only, I re, what I remember from that conversation that we had, it was a woman and she, it was a woman, but she was very, I mean, again, I don't know. They were just in like these like white sort of like, not white robes or anything, just like very bohemian looking. And we were in the middle of like, I was walking through a forest and I was like, okay, well, why am I walking through here? And the more that I would like, you know, go through this trail, I saw that they were waiting for me. And I was like, who are you, who guys who are you again and they they just greeted me with like this the details don't matter at the moment but we're glad you're here and i remember you had mentioned i think it was uh archangel raziel because he had a darker skin tone mm -hmm. and it was a, a woman but she was like white but again i i still don't know if it's like a their guide or if it's just Archangel Raziel because I've just as of recently it's just been Susie and the way that I picture Susie she's a very she's where she wears cowboy boots she's very like um I guess the, the best way I could describe her like um aesthetically speaking is like you know, like creepers or like Doc Martens, always attention to her feet and because she likes to like, you know, stomp her feet to get attention. But she also has like big hair and she sort of reminds me of like Annie Oakley in a way where she's like, really doesn't care. She's going to get through to you, but she'll do it in a very charismatic, like, like Leo sort of way where she's like, come on, you know you want to do this. Come on, you know you want to do this. And it's like, I mean, the time is ticking. I don't know why you're taking forever. Don't you want to be cool? And I'm like, all right, Suze, you're right. I'll just do it. And I'm like as bolder. And I think that as like we've developed our friendship as, you know, our sort of contract as being her, my guide, I feel like I walk taller. I feel like I sort of, I'm guided in a way where, I've always known, but now I'm a lot more open to recognizing and seeing the signs and seeing how um, she's showing herself to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, I hear you. Um, I do want to say I had talked about this when everything had kind of like happened about Susie and who she was. I got a comment from a friend and I want to run this by you and see if there probably is a reaction, see what Susie would say. <laughs> but maybe because the people that we do talk to, um, Kelly had disclosed the reason why, no matter if it's like our planet alignments, the characteristics that we have in our signs, uh, where they sit in our birth chart, like it was disclosed, like we have shared many past lives together, Omar and I. And um, so the theory on Susie is, because I do believe that she is a guide. Um, am I getting, I'm trying to ask George right now, like, am I getting that she's been here before? And he's like, no, continue with this. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> Sometimes they will tell me it's like, 
Yes, no, but he's he's sitting in amusement. He's just like, let's see where this goes. Because they're having a good time. They're loving this, okay? Like, well, mine is anyway. I think Susie is too. But um, <laughs> so the theory was that... Susie is a very... Well, the, 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 the idea was maybe we knew Susie in a past life, like all three of us, because she's over here traveling to Texas and getting my attention, you know, slapping herbs and <laughs> telling Girl, you to bro, pay attention. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I mean, you know what? Hmm. I think I know where you're going with. Do you think that she's our guide? Like she's she's over here. It? I don't know. She loves you, though. I love her, too. I like her. I think she knows that I'm very, like, I can be, like, a wild child if I want to be. But, like, you know, she's like, oh, how cute. Like, <laughs> reformed. <laughs> Listen, when we started the recording, we were serious. Yeah. And we were talking about emotions in a very serious way. We're like, we're going to do this podcast and we're going to approach it in a very serious manner. And you know what? We couldn't collect any second because it was a delay over and over again. And I think it was until we actually decided, you know what? We're going to, our subject for this episode has to be spirit guides because. She wasn't going to let us finish the podcast. It is how this. <laughs> She wasn't. She was like, no, you guys are going to talk about spirit guides. You're going to talk about how I, and she was, she's, I feel what she's really trying to say is just like, I'm the white rabbit that y'all sort of like followed down here. And it's no, this, this acid, this, this life is an acid trip and it's becoming a lot real. And now it's funny because we can't deny that it isn't her influence because this recording has been so perfect. Up until, hang on. Now that we're talking, mentioning it. Now that we're mentioning it and we're mentioning her. So when I talked about maybe knowing her, like you, like all three of us knowing each other, she did put a little bit of delay on your camera. And then like, it was, but it was good. It caught up again though. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What are your theories? What more theories do you have? I think it's, I think it's possible. I know that was me in delay, but I think she was starting to talk again. What do you think she looks like? Well, okay. I agree with the boots. I want, not that you had gave, given the name of like, the persona of what she has, but I don't even know who that is. So I wouldn't even know with like with a picture, but um, I think of very like brown curly hair, like George, but very, not like dark brown, but a light brown. I don't know why, very light brown, very just like, whew, like lion mane, <laughs> like, you know? No, um, and I feel like for some reason, if she had big hoops and bangles, she would have them. Like she would be the accessory queen. Ding, ding, ding. Is that why she came into my room? Because you know you saw my hats yesterday. Maybe that's why she likes. <laughs> No, she does. She likes, I mean, I guess like the way that I could really describe it, it's very like, I guess like this desert bohemian woman that take, like, I, she's very psychedelic in the way that she loves peyote or just really expanding your mind that way. So I feel like, very uh, I mean, kind of. Yeah, very kind that, of. very that sort of yeah. just like, but she's also has like a very nice purity to her that isn't quite like so serious. She's she knows 
how life can get, which is why she always introduces the, the act of play and laughing because that's how the creative flow comes out. And that's how you sort of like release your, relinquish your sense of control. Because again, like where, where does our creativity lie? Our sacral chakra, the, the root. And if we're not necessarily rooted and we're not like grounded so that we can create, it's, it's gonna come out like not how you wanted it to be because the vision isn't quite connecting. Mm-hmm. No, I, so, I agree, I agree. She, she always introduces like this sense of like, why don't you see it from upside down? Or why don't you see it like right side up? It doesn't matter how you see it, it's just how, you, how your perspective is. And I think that she, really no she i mean again i like to see her as a kid that likes to hang up and then get down from there and just laughs and just runs away and like okay goodbye <laughs> oh i guess it just letting you know, don't take everything so seriously because this is meant to be serious yeah no you're got like you, again i think okay there have been a couple times that you were talking I think she is in very much agreement with everything you said and she communicates by pausing the video or something being like, yeah, this is on point. Like not necessarily like in a disagreement, she'll help catch it up a bit, but like, yeah, yeah, that, that right there, that right there, like, like remember that because and I was laughing with Omar because when we first started this, I was like, yeah, she's here for our benefit. She's trying to make sure that this podcast doesn't tank. <laughs> Not that it will. <laughs> but she, I think, well, I mean, it's, I, I feel like perhaps the reason why she's making it a difficult, uh, again, this the reason why we started this podcast is because one, the appearance of spirit guides, two, uh, I guess really opening the door or even going further down the hole that is there of fantasy. And it's just like, you, you're ready? Because like, things are about to shift. Things are about to get a little um, Cheshire Cat-like. And I think that if anything, she really embodies that. And I think that like, hey, if, if, there, if, there, if we had a physical um or in not even non or even non-physical like guess it would be her she's very the cashier cat the cheshire cat where she's like very riddly and she's like oh well why don't you go this way uh do you think it's the right way i don't know it's up to you yeah where you want to go how do you want to navigate yeah and i think like we at least dare to ask those questions which was kind of like one of the other reasons this podcast was so awesome for us to like start together because we asked the questions and I did talk to you about that today it's like yeah if I stop asking questions just like lock me up and throw away the key you know um (laughs) like there's something wrong with me like you know like if I stop asking questions like yeah um because I think not to go like on the serious topic because we're not trying to get there today, but like, but it, it still applies though. It's like, <clears throat> we always wondered these specific things or these synchronicities or these ironies in our life or messages that come through. And we're just like, is this really happening? Am I really seeing this? Has anybody else thought like this before? Has anybody else experienced this? You know, and it really does kind of help with that platform of being like, well, if maybe if you weren't too brave to ask it, maybe we've thought about it most likely and we're just putting it here. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, so. No, you're right. I mean, I think that within the spiritual community that we sort of like, were acquainted with one another like it even through like through uh you know live streams of just conversations through like a live stream chat on instagram 
um, just bringing up the subject. Has anyone been feeling this way? Because I've been feeling kind of like, you know, like this. And just know that you're not alone. Yeah. But again, it's also having the, the trust within yourself of wanting to even want to ask the question of like, hey, anyone else experiencing this kind of like awakening or is anyone else experiencing a sense of synchronicities that you can't quite explain? Like you can even be um, something so simplistic as like angel numbers. And so often I find people see um, repeating numbers, but they don't quite want to put two and two together they think oh that's so great that's a coincidence and so funny that they would come out that way but if you sort of like rewind a little bit of the thing that you were thinking about and you saw that number uh perhaps you should ask you know you go further down asking more questions Mm -hmm. and it's not that you're actively looking for these signs i think that if you're looking for signs you'll find them but it's really mm-hmm. just about like having the faith in the divine or something that's greater than you to ask those questions and say like, you know what, I don't know what's going on. If there's anything out there that could provide a sense of, of a, a question, an answer, or even like satisfy this curiosity I have in this unknown, mm-hmm. that would be great. And I think that in order to do so, you have to be open one has to be open. Yeah. And I, I, uh, you have to be open and I kind of feel too, like, um, it's like a patience thing also, like you'll learn obviously just like with everything in life, you learn things over time. Um, again, I find it very fascinating how she disclosed names as far as like, you know, this is my name and this is what you can call me, that kind of thing. Um, and versus somebody else getting the name from somebody else who does know how to channel. And then that builds into another kind of like ability of you learning other names for other guides and other people you can associate with. Um, Cause it did happen and I did forget to tell you about it. So kind of like how you went down the rabbit hole of finding out her name. And um, I had a friend of mine from India. We talked, I met her over the internet. Um, We talk on WhatsApp a lot. And um, I talked to her last week because I had, I had, it'd been some time. And she's like, I just don't know. I don't know who my guide is. And I'm like, okay, let's try this out. Let's see how this goes. Because people have been asking me, I want to know, I want to know my guide's name. And sometimes George will be like, this is their name. Sometimes I will get, I am not supposed to disclose this name. Okay. Um, That's happened one time at least. All right. And there's a good reasoning behind it. But um, for her specifically, I know she had other guides, but the one who wanted to disclose himself more was a gentleman. He is, um, he was, they described him as like not being in human form, okay, um, has been here a lot, and the name I got was Basic Abraham. I'm like, okay, Abraham, and I was like, anybody else, and I kept getting like a word that would start with the letter P. And I'm like, okay, I don't really know like what he's trying to say or how to spell it, but the name, I was like, I'm getting Persia or Parisian or something, okay? Um, When I Googled it, uh, the first, I'm going to pull it up for you real quick if I'm able to. The first word that came up uh, for names in, and, uh, I didn't even type in the word Abraham, number one. I didn't type in, I just put in Parisian names, I think, or, um, yeah. And when I looked at the first one, the first name, it said Abraham. That's somehow, that's how they talk sometimes. 
just kind of like with you with Susie. So it's crazy because I remember like when you had said, I'm getting a Sarah with an S or like a like a sus sound. And I was like, is it Jeremy? And you're like, no, definitely, definitely not, not Jeremy. <laughs> and um and then I was like, well, 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 you know, this isn't this isn't a pressing like question at the moment that I need to know right now, but eventually I guess it'll come to me. And they became Susie and I'm like gotcha that's where the suck came from but I think that if you're if someone's out there if y'all y'all are out there trying to figure out what who your guides are be patient very much be open because perhaps the moment that you are asking you're not quite as open or relaxed yeah. to in you know to have that introduction so y'all chill out It'll come when it comes because I was even questioning this like the beginning of the year. I'm like, do I have one? I probably do. They're probably really nice to me. <laughs> she is, but she's very boisterous and she's very direct. She's bouncy. Mm -hmm. Um, Parham or Farham, however you want to say it, is Parisian Iranian. Parham means Abraham. Oh, <gasps> yeah. That's wild. Why? <laughs> what else do we have in this rabbit hole? What else? What did the rabbit? I mean, you're. I mean, you're right. You're right. I mean, it's this isn't something that is too wild to even think of, but it's also like, again shooting out like that dm to the universe asking like what's your name mm -hmm. could you come through and you'd be surprised people people surprises are out there you just got to be open to it i mean again like how, how how what would you suggest to one of our listeners or one of our watchers um if they have a question regarding like spirit guides and who they are and if they're your friend or your best friend or what what their purpose is really like your your personal <laughs> like you know definition i would say like based on my personal experience which again it's still something i'm very much learning and it the more it's like when you go and you work out at the gym you're flexing mm -hmm. a muscle okay you're building on that muscle. The more that you go, the stronger that muscle is going to build is what I've seen. So I think a lot of the time where even when I feel on the beam or off the beam has a lot to do with, and people might laugh at me and be like, well, I haven't got that kind of time for that. And like, but you still might have five minutes where you're just going to the bathroom that might be the quiet time that you need. That is your meditation. And it's not, it doesn't Stop have right to be. <laughs> Stop right there. When I received the thought of wanting to look up Susie and the Banshees on my Spotify, mm -hmm. I was sitting on the toilet. I was like, why right, why right now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's funny that you say that. Because, yeah, it came to me that way. I'm just saying. <laughs> it, you're alone. You're not. I mean, think about it. That's, like, the most vulnerable you can be is, like, it's not to, like, make this go and take a turn. But we're keeping it light. But we're keeping it funny. We're keeping it light. It's the most vulnerable moment. Got pants down angles, probably, you know, for most of us. Like, depending on how long you're going to be in there. But, like... <laughs> But like, I mean, five minutes or in the shower, there's always this constant thing of like a laundry list of things to do. Like I got to go to the grocery store. I got to go pick up the kids at five, you know, like all this other stuff is bills due today. And it's like, if you just kind of like let that go for like a minute, two minutes, five minutes, you're going to start getting these downloads from your guides. And of course, my husband is doing this. 
anyway. Um, sorry for the noise, guys. He's working on something in the garage. Um, he's actually putting he's putting up the punching bag up. <laughs> so, um, do you think this yeah, might be a segue toward our segue to end? No, I'm kidding. no, go ahead. <laughs> no, but like, well, I... huh? No, go ahead. No, so. Yeah, I think a lot has to do with like sitting in that quiet, that meditation. And a lot of us don't really, the way that we're questioning things, like our thoughts and the questions that we do have, like when we start daring to ask those questions in our minds and maybe like even asking them out in publicly, that's when I start to think that they just start disclosing a little more like this person's listening and they're paying attention. like big time big time mm -hmm. um and yeah and again the i think it was so helpful regardless if you think somebody gave you just a name or not or what it could be um because george and i've had conversations and he's just like a name is just a name a name for us in human form is really more about us when we want to be as recognized for something, they really could care less about what they're called. And I think kind of Susie gave you that, that you can call me this if you want to, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and as long as we're trying to connect with them and acknowledge them from what I've, I've learned, um, within this time frame, like, I mean, I'm not saying I'm sitting here trying to be an expert or any of that, but like, again, based on what I've learned in my experience, like, that is how they have been better able to communicate and then more things come across. And so, I mean, and, and, and not being afraid to ask, I mean, I even had times where I tried to get a message off to someone else and I said, I'm getting this message of like dolls, but I put it in Spanish of like doll face. Like when you think of doll in Spanish, it's muñeca, right? Well, <laughs> she said, uh, I never got called that nickname before somebody had passed on. I just was trying to figure it out it wasn't like anything I was I was just curious and just drop it at that if it was wrong it was wrong the next time I went on to check to see a video the next episode was about her fascination of her dolls like they speak in code and I was like well how else is I supposed to know this She's never really talked about how she has, like, she loves this specific doll, like, or dolls, plural, you know? So it was, I don't know. I mean, it's just kind of like things are, it's like, yeah, they have been there, folks. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> well, no, I just, I just think it's fascinating that you say that because, I mean, again, like, I would like to set, set, segue into our the next topic that I would love to introduce, what we're going to introduce in the next episode, which is really just about your inner child. And it's funny you mentioned like through dolls is how it's sort of like, again, with Susie, don't take it so seriously, be a kid. Yeah. You can be an adult, but it's that being an adult can get too overwhelming that we lose that free spirited giggle that we just you know we, I mean we've all just been like sitting on a park bench or something or doing something solitary we just think of something and we just chuckle you know yeah 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 I um I find it the like so Alanis Morissette ironic like here we are grown-ups trying to be kids and we have our spirit guides that who might deem when we were younger is, oh, that's just their imaginary friend. Like, yeah. Yeah. So awesome segue, Omar. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think that even bringing up the subject of spirit guides, we also have to really, I, this is just a bookend, you know, of another conversation, which is like, you know, perhaps like 
our spirit guides are really sort of like, I mean, for me, it was like the white rabbit. It could be, you know, the Mad Hatter for somebody else. There's so many different people. There's so many different guys. There's so many different, like, characters that come into your life. But yeah. again, like, at the story behind Alice going going there was really just her being a child. And I would like to believe that, like, within that story, it's really just our inner child trying to work itself through the deep programming that we have sort of conditioned ourselves yeah growing up and mm -hmm. as we're growing up we as we you know go into adults we start to like realize oh we have trauma oh we have this thing we haven't necessarily dealt with there's so many things and you start thinking like am i going to get lost in this checkered game of the queen of hearts where there's uh, what am I supposed to do? Is it is this really a game, you know? Or is this real? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So then when you become so childlike and are a lot more open as a child, because when children sort of, when you read children like, you know, fairy tales or even like parables or um, stories, it's the story behind the, or the characters behind the bigger story which is like you know there is a point like for instance like a uh, little mermaid for instance uh it is told from a, a sort of child's like perspective yeah. but that's but with the, like sort of like an adult overtone of seriousness perhaps mm -hmm. and yeah. Again, I don't think that we would have been a lot more connected to our spirit guides if we didn't introduce play into our lives or even connect with that like inner child that's wanting to get that attention because it, we're so focused on the becoming adults and sort of taking life so seriously and like, you know, that's childish. Don't, you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't dress a certain way or it's silly to wear that like, that sort of bright makeup, yeah. you know? yeah. No, I, I agree. It's kind of like um, just because we put on the adult clothing, like when did we end up being so serious? Which is why I appreciate Susie so much because I mean, like, I know she follows you around, but like, she's like, okay, they're together. Like, let's remember, like, this is what we need to do in unison. And so it's like, okay. And um. But yeah, like, when did we just kind of, like, sign up for the contract of, like, okay, I, I signed up into adulthood, not that I really wanted to, but, like, when did I feel like I signed the contract to just be all work and no play? I agree. Yeah. I think that even, even as adults, we tend to think that life has to be a certain way. And we plan things. And at the end of the day, we can plan the perfect picnic. We can't predict the weather. And it's about, okay, well, let's have a, a rainy day picnic. We'll laugh about it, you know? We'll yeah. wear rain boots. We'll run around. We'll get our feet, like, we'll stomp on, like, puddles. And we'll make something of it. But at the end of the day, at least we still took ourselves out and did something silly. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, my love, well, what do you want to do? I think this is a beautiful um, ending to this topic. And I think that next time when we speak in the next episode, guys, we will be talking about uh, our inner child and perhaps like even healing our inner child and things of that matter. You healing or me healing my inner child? <laughs> All of us healing. All of us children. No. Because we both know no I'm a Gemini sun. She's a, Gwen is a Gemini moon. We have uh, two, we're like, we're just twinning. There's just too many, there's too many kids. And it's always looking at the lighter twin and like the darker twin and really trying to balance those two out. And I mm -hmm. feel like as a Gemini or even having heavy Gemini placements, it's really about integrating like the dichotomy of those opposite, um, energies so when i talk for about inner child like healing for myself and perhaps for you it's like we see it both ways 
there's a lot more flexibility, but everyone's different, you know? Yes. Yeah. Versus really yeah, on- multi-dimensional versus very linear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mm-hmm. agree. Well, I would say, um, because we want this engaging, like before we close it out, um, I would like to say if anybody has their thoughts or ideas or theories revolving around Susie and who she is, if we've all been together and met together, like, please leave a comment. Um, <laughs> and then maybe I can read them next time. <laughs> we can read them together. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Please, so guys, let's if you have any like, comments or like, questions. We don't have all the answers. Again, we're just two people talking about things that we've experienced down in this like wonderland of cosmic uh, kookiness, really. Yeah. Unexplainable. Yeah. Mysterious universe. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're open. We're open-minded and we're willing to listen. <laughs> Give us your comments, concerns, questions, and if we can't answer them, we'll try. We'll try. But until next time. Bye, guys. See you next time. Bye. (laughs) And this is what I've struggled with. It's like, not necessarily the Morrigan being like a dark goddess, because she's both. She is light and dark. And um, it's learning how to work with the two and learning discernment. And so the discernment is, it's like, when is it necessary to go like battle fury? You know what I mean? And I'm like, look, I'm removing myself from the situation. There are other people here. I can smell through the bullshit basically. And I caught you. And so I don't have to do it, but I'm going to. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? It feels it's I guess what you're what I'm hearing is that what you're saying is I don't want to do it, but I guess I have to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's like again, like we we're very familiar with like Gemini being yeah. I think we're just starting right now. I mean honestly. <laughs> yeah.